Over the next five minutes, I'll be talking about a significant global environmental health concern. That is the link between environmental endocrine disruptors and recent declines in male reproductive potential. Over the past century, medical records have indicated some concerning global trends. There's been an unexplained increase in the incidence of testicular cancer, particularly in young males, and also a steady decline in male sperm counts. This has increased the number of men in the subfertile range that also have a significantly reduced ability to achieve pregnancy. A century is simply too short for any significant genetic changes. The current hypothesis is that early life exposure to environmental endocrine disruptors during a critical fetal and early life period. It will induce malformations in testes development that will ultimately give rise to lower sperm counts and increased incidence of testicular cancer. Once in the body, environmental endocrine disruptors are capable of interfering with normal hormonal processes in our endocrine system. They do this primarily by either acting like normal hormones found in the body, such as testosterone or estrogen, or by inhibiting their activity and interfering with normal physiology. Environmental endocrine disruptors can be found all around us. They're commonly found in personal care products, such as cosmetics, pesticides, including atrazine, DDT, and others, drugs that were intended for their therapeutic potential, synthetic and naturally occurring hormones, such as those injected in beef cattle and other animals during raising, as well as naturally occurring phytoestrogens found in soy-based products. And lastly, they're commonly found in industrial chemicals used in the final product or in the industrial processing of paints, plastics, and resins. Of concern is that children are actually exposed to relatively high levels of endocrine-disrupting substances during key periods of development. Phthalates, for example, and the principal phthalate, DHP, is used to make PVC plastics commonly found in toys, packaging films, care products, medical tubing, and blood storage bags. DHP is actually not chemically bound to PVC and such can leach out into the surrounding environment. It's been detected at reasonable levels in amniotic fluid, cord blood, and semen, and postnatally in breast milk and baby food. However, the highest levels are actually in neonates receiving intensive medical care from plastic blood storage bags and medical tubing. These levels are up to 50 times higher than an average person. DHP has been shown to disrupt testosterone levels during development, and is these disruptions that are thought to contribute to long-term alterations in male reproductive function and development. There's a general misconception that it is only man-made chemicals that can act as endocrine-disrupting substances. In reality, there are also a number of naturally occurring endocrine disruptors that we can be exposed to. Phytoestrogens, for example, such as genistein, are commonly found in soybeans. Phytoestrogens have a chemical structure that is similar to a natural hormone, estradiol, and as such can elicit some of the same effects that estradiol does in the body. Of concern is that up to 30% of U.S. children are fed soy-based infant formula and receive very, very high levels of phytoestrogens during a key period of development. These levels are up to 50 times higher than a vegetable-based diet and up to 700 times higher than non-vegetarians. An estrogenic response during a key period of development is thought to impair testes development and ultimately contribute to male reproductive abnormalities that are observable later in life. Research is being conducted to better understand and prove the association between endocrine disruptors and impaired male reproductive function. This study, for example, demonstrated a positive association between decreased sperm numbers and soy food intake in men that presented themselves with infertility at a clinic. Research is also being conducted in animal models to prove a biological link between certain endocrine disruptors and a particular male reproductive outcome. Research in our lab, for example, has demonstrated that pregnant rats exposed to a mixture of endocrine disruptors, such as phytoestrogens and phthalates, have male offspring that have impaired testes development and function. The unfortunate reality, however, is that only a very small number of chemicals have been tested this stringently. Of the 50,000 chemicals currently used by U.S. consumers and industry, only 300 have been tested thoroughly, resulting in five restrictions by the governing bodies. The National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences, NIEHS, in the United States, has recognized this discrepancy and has since taken steps to remedy it. These include the development of rapid automated chemical screen tests, exposure forecasters, and online computer simulations that will ultimately prioritize chemicals for human health effects without the use of animals. However, these programs are still very much in their infancy. While these tools are being developed, what can be done at the consumer level? I feel one of the most important things is to stay informed, which will allow you to make more appropriate choices for you and your children. Some relatively easy changes can be made to minimize the exposure to certain endocrine disruptors. For example, you can avoid plastic food containers, PVC wraps, and children's toys made with phthalates, or marked recycle number three. 
You can also make sure to carefully read personal care product labels to make sure that they don't contain phthalates. For pesticides, you can buy organic and make sure you wash your produce. You can also avoid pesticides altogether by using environmentally friendly pest control alternatives. You should also exercise a precautionary approach, which essentially means that even in the absence of concrete toxicological data, you should err on the side of caution and minimize your exposure to potentially hazardous substances. Thank you.